policies in your favor with Standard Chartered Bank. Why has it been called the greatest car on earth? Is it because it is the choice of so many world leaders? Is it because of its extraordinary reputation for safety? Or its storied and celebrated history? Or is it simply because once a person has experienced it, they find it difficult to settle for anything less? The 2008 S-Class, the legendary sedan from Mercedes-Benz. ADMIS, a world-leading broker in commodity future and options. In association with ADMIS Hong Kong, ADMIS is now in Asia. ADMIS Hong Kong, your professional brokerage partner in the global futures and options markets. To find out alternative market opportunities, contact us today. Well, out of the money, whatever cheer there was at the start of the session based on the minor rally we saw on Wall Street is not taking hold, certainly not gaining traction in Asia. Maybe we are decoupling to uh, dredge up an old word there. Well, obviously, the uh, Annus Horribilis of 2008 has seen a lot of deterioration, not just in the uh, generic banking and financial industries, but a lot of names, heralded names, they have gone on for many, many generations, in some cases have dissipated, witness. Lehman Brothers, et al., AIG, Fannie, Freddie, losing a lot of their cachet. But in these tough times, how do you keep your brand chugging along and how do you stay in good stead with the public? Joining us today is John Gersma from Young and Rubicum, a group where he's Chief Insights Officer, and we're talking about branding in these very, very uh, difficult to brave times. John joins us from Singapore today. John. Morning. Uh, it would seem that branding morning, and brand management image control would be probably last on the docket right now with uh, so many companies just trying to stay alive, period. Well, you know, in fact, Bernie, the important thing is that we need to have business focus on brands and branding because brand value actually represents one-third of the market value of the S&P 500. And this fact has actually risen almost 80 percent in three decades. So brand value is essentially shareholder value. When we say one-third of the S&P is comprised of brand value, what are we talking about? We're talking about goodwill, intangible, and how do you reckon? Yeah, well, that's one of the real big challenges, right? Because when you look at intangible assets, they're often very hard to quantify. And what we've been able to do is work with Miller Brown Optimer and understand across various sectors, on average, the goodwill that's attributed to brands is actually almost a third of the value. So if we start to think about it this way, suddenly you have CEOs needing to think like, like chief marketing officers focused on the brand because the importance of that is absolutely critical to creating shareholder value. Well, it seems like a lot of the, uh, the, the undercurrents nowadays uh, are getting the best of the efforts by these CEOs to, do, to, to keep up a, a, a good face in the, uh, you know, in, in the light of adversity. You look at what's going on on Capitol Hill. You've got Wagner from GM. You've got Nardelli from Chrysler, uh, Mulally from Ford. I mean, they're begging hat in hand to get $25 billion in taxpayer money. Surely brands suffer with that kind of a pathetic show on the screen. Yeah, no? Abs no, absolutely, Bernie. And I think that when we look back at our research, we studied through Brand Asset Valuator, which is the largest continuous database of brands in the world. And we study over 400,000 consumers across 40,000 brands. And what we found was some actually staggering statistics. We found a, a quality decline of almost 24%, awareness and liking of brands in double-digit decline, and actually a decline in trust of brands of almost 50%. Also, we found that loyalty had, had declined from 40 to 9% over six years. So essentially what we think is happening is that this new world is actually starting to hollow out brand value, and it's a critical issue for business to focus on. You know, if I'm driving down Main Street, uh, any town USA, or in my own hometown in the Pacific Northwest, and I see uh, they still have signs up, you know, uh, you know, with with with, with the Washington Mutual. I mean, ugh, gag me with a spoon. You know, I mean, look what happened. Every people uh, people in their 401k investments uh, imploded because of the WAMU uh, breakup. Well, I, you know, is is the financial industry really the culprit here, or does that transfer into every other facet of daily life? The things you buy, the things you use, the medicines you use. When you say that, you know, brand integrity is down 50%, are we talking about America as a whole? 
Yeah, I think we are. I mean, what we found in our research, Bernie, was that actually consumers are devoting a smaller sort of collection of basket of brands that they're going to be truly emotional toward. And these are the ones that they're willing to pay more for, that they're willing to be more loyal. And we found this through our research. Again, we worked with professors from the Columbia Business School and the University of Washington Business School. They had done a lot of their early work with David Acker on branding. And what we found was this quality inside a brand that's called energized differentiation. And essentially, it's about a brand not only being different, but continuing to be different. So great brands that are focused on driving this energy, driving this differentiation, what they're actually able to do is escape their categories. And we're seeing this dynamic across a number of different brands. Clearly, you see this with brands like Google and Nike and Apple. But you're also seeing it in brands that are noted for customer service, like Nordstrom. You may find it in a brand that's actually escaping what is a low-interest category, like Geico. In the U.S., we've, we've seen this brand being very effective at layering its communications and consistently surprising consumers. Subway in the QSR category, for example, Zappos with shoes. So there's a whole host of different ways that you can focus on driving your energy and creating this value with consumers. John, I want to get your thoughts on what's going on in the uh, in, in in the various multimedia spaces here. Ad, uh, you know, ad spend is obviously uh, an easy uh, target in tough times when it comes to discretionary spending. What's going to be happening there uh, across uh, the media buying uh, spectrum? Everything from periodical to dailies to uh, electronic media. Do you, do you th see things basically shrinking into a into, into a hole? And I guess more importantly, what's the effect going to be on brand awareness and uh, image management for, for major companies that have a lot of stake? Yeah. Well, Bernie, what's actually concerning about about the data as we step into you know this this essentially this recession is that all the data and the research that I've just mentioned up to this point was actually conducted over 13 years leading up into the end of 2007. So what's going to be critically important for business is to focus on continuing to drive their brand and drive their brand value. Now, clearly, we're seeing a softness in marketing spend as consumers are going to postpone purchases. They're going to focus on value-driven uh, brands and, and products and services. Yet at the same time, it's going to be critically important for them to actually understand that building the brand in this period is actually an opportunity mm -hmm. for tremendous competitive advantage. John, great talking to you. Uh, interesting uh, sidebar kind of element to all.